Hello, welcome to Long Island Weather Update. It's about nine, a quarter to ten on July the 9th, 2024, and a little bit better today. No real break from the humidity, but not quite as hot. Uh, we did have more clouds around, and we also had uh, more of a breeze today from the south, so that helped things, at least for us here on Long Island. Now, if you were in New Jersey, not so much. Uh, so let's go look at our current conditions right now across the area. And we've got temperatures generally in the upper 70s across the area. Uh, 77 at ice lift on the south shore. It's a little bit cooler with mid 70s, uh, with south southwesterly winds, south to southwesterly winds. Of course, inland it's a lot hotter. Uh, 84 at Central Park. Hey, the alley at least is a little cooler than Central Park. We're at 80. Uh, so, uh, and uh, let's see what we got here in New Jersey, uh, Ocean County around 80 degrees. So fairly uniform. Throw the dew points in. Yeah, it's definitely still very humid out there. Dew points in the mid-70s. Uh, and you'll notice heat advisories for uh, Nassau County, northern Suffolk, uh, as well as much of the lower Hudson Valley. Uh, it remains in effect until 8 p.m. on Wednesday. Air quality alert as well. Um, I'm not sure if Nassau County is an air quality alert. It does not. But we do have the heat advisory in effect. Um but the air quality alerts mainly for inland now. Excessive heat warning for uh, for New Jersey until uh, until 8 p.m. Wednesday, uh, because things are going to be tomorrow is going to be a pretty brutal day in Jersey. Uh, and uh, so let's go. Speaking of brutal, let's take a look at the, what the highs were today across the area, and you'll see Long Island a lot better. Low 80s at Ice Slip, only 82, 84 at Farmingdale. Now Na Central Nassau is more like in the mid 80s, uh, and the, uh, Central Park got to 88. It's saying 88, so if, I'm not sure if that's correct, though. I think they might have hit 90 at Central Park today. Uh, and then going into New Jersey, wow, very hot in Tom's River, uh, especially at Miller Air Park, 97 degrees for a high there. But, however, if you were at Seaside Heights, it was only 83. And uh, 93 in downtown Tom's River, so maybe a little bit cooler by the water. Uh, but inland, you roasted once again. Uh, absolutely brutal. Looking at the lows... Uh, low 70s generally. Um, and everybody knows Tom's River is the hot spot. Sometimes it even beats out Newark Airport. It's like unbelievable. That Miller Air Park is uh, very hot. The New Jersey Pinelands are a very, very hot place. Uh, so uh, generally, yeah, low, low, low to mid 70s for lows across the area. Uh, precipitation, rainfall. There were, there was a couple of showers of the, and some actually a severe thunderstorm that was over. Northwest New Jersey, and that actually put down about a half inch of rain in some areas. But other than that, those are the only people that saw rain today. Uh, other than that, that's it. No, no rain at all, pretty much. Um, let's see what the day was like in Miller Air Park today as far as um, the dew points. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. 2.79 again. Absolutely brutal there. That's almost 80 degree dew point. That's... So it felt like over 100 uh, if you were in Tom's River, actually. Uh, 93 with a dew point of 79 at 2.30 this afternoon in Tom's River made it feel like 110. Wow, that's, yeah, that's, that's incredible. That really is incredible. That's just, that's just, uh, these dew points are just getting unbelievable, I'll tell you. Now, I slipped, luckily, I don't think the dew point made it that high today. They're going to have to start putting high dew points in, like, uh, um, you know, what the high was for the dew point. Yeah, 70, dew points in the mid-70s, which is still really, really bad <laughs> for ice slip. Uh, let's look at our statistics for today, our climate statistics. And uh, you'll see for ice slip, high of 82 and a low of 73, 3 degrees above normal, which isn't terribly above normal. It's just a lot of humidity. Central Park failed to reach 90 today. So uh, the heat wave has, you know, well, I mean, technically... You have to be above 90 to have a heat wave. So 89 was the high there, a low of 75, 5 degrees above normal. So, yeah, they failed to make it to 90. So heat wave, technically, the string of 90-degree days is over, I think, after, I think, three or four of them at least. Uh, but they'll, re they'll, probably, they'll probably reach 90 again tomorrow, perhaps. Uh, we got plenty more heat down the pipeline if you like the heat. Uh, there's plenty of it here. Uh, and you'll see there's still some showers and thunderstorms up in Connecticut. Um, now, there was an issue with JCPNL today. We'll bring up. I'm not sure if this was related to the weather, uh, but uh, there was a blackout at JCPNL uh, at 12,000 residents. Actually, it was more than that. It was over 30,000. Uh, 
outages impacting uh, customers in Bre- Basking Ridge, Bernardsville. So Somerset County, uh, n- pending investigation. So uh, let's see. Nothing. I mean, how is News 12 not even co- News 12 New Jersey has not even covered this. There was a big blackout. You saw I posted it earlier. If you looked at my community posts, uh, which, which, which I'll have to do. And they don't have anything on this. I don't News 12 in general sucks now. They're all going downhill. I mean, the, how do you not cover that? It affects 30,000 people. If you go into my, uh, I'll go, I'll show you a community here. Um, um, well, you'll see, I'll go into community and uh, let's see if we can find it. Uh, where is it? Come on. All right, well, I can't seem to find it. Content, I'm going to, oh, there it is. Posts. So here we go. Um, so uh, this is what I posted about the blackout uh, in, in J- J.C. Pinnell, 30,000 customers. Um, you see here, uh, there it is. There's there it says 30,000 up there. So um, how does that not get covered? I mean, what's wrong with the media? I, I mean, seriously, what is wrong with the media? How do you not cover that? And this kind of heat, people left without air conditioning and stuff. So luckily, it looks like the power has been res- still have 7,000 plus customers out of power. Uh, this is in Warren County. May have, that may have been from the storms. Monmouth has 728. Uh, JCPNL is absolutely abysmal. They really are. They really are. So let's see. First Energy has... Th- th- uh, PSNG also is fourth. It's very hot in Jersey. And, the, and, and, you know, and, that's, and we'll get to Texas in a moment here. Look, Texas, still 1.8 million customers without power there. I mean... They've done a lot of restorations. Let's see, Polk County still barely any restoration there. I mean, they've really they haven't restored anyone over there yet. Uh, that's unbelievable. That is, that would be um, um, Center Point still has 1.4 million. Um, you know, it's very bad because Sam Houston still has uh, Sam Houston still has 64,825 customers without power. Uh, that yeah, there is transmission line damage. Uh, if we go to Sam Houston um, Electric here, should have an update on this whole thing here. But they have seven substations that are out of power uh, in their update here. Hurricane Barrel Restoration Updates. So it says, uh, update. Um, Sam Houston is a uh, transmission service has not been restored to seven substations. And we are unable uh, to provide because uh, the, s- the transmission service is from Entergy. Um, uh, so that's, uh, that is a big problem. And, you know, here we are, day two, and they still have not fixed the transmission lines. And this is not uh, a Sam Houston uh, co-op's fault. This would be Entergy. Entergy. Entergy, Texas. Uh, that uh, is... Uh, you know, barrel may be over, but the damage from it continues. Um, um, so let's see. We got Intergy Newsroom. Let's see what they've got here. Because uh, the transmission lines are Intergy transmission lines. So let's see. You have some pictures here of some of the damage here uh, from the storm here. Um, those look like they could be sub-transmission lines, but I'm not sure about transmission lines. Um, so, we probably have down, down transmission lines, but we just don't have any pictures on, on that. Uh, Polk County, Texas, uh, has, I mean, uh, most of the county is in the dark right now. Uh, the whole county is in the dark. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, let's see. Disaster declaration. Uh, they have a mass boil water in it. Uh, in effect, and this is far inland too, so the effects from Barrow were not just at the coast, but far inland. People are sitting in the dark. There's, uh, all right, there's a, there were, I guess there was a break in uh, the the water line, or whatever, um, and they've had absolutely brutal weather there. It's it's unbelievable, um, and uh, let's see, Barrow. I'll just click Barrow. Transmission lines, and let's see, and let's see if oops, not Paul Barrow, oops, <laughs> that would. Uh, you know, let's see if we can get some pictures here of some of the damage here that we've seen. Um, 
uh, let's just see if we can get some. It's mostly distribution lines that have down, and maybe some, again, maybe some sub-transmission lines that we're seeing here. Um, uh, let's see, barrel, uh, tracking the co-op response. So there has been damage to transmission lines. It says both transmission and distribution lines were affected uh, by a lot of these. And they have a lot of those wooden H-frames uh, that just cannot deal with uh, these kind of winds, and I don't know why they keep using them. So I don't have any pictures of the damage, unfortunately. Again, the media not really covering that angle of it too much. Uh, as always, the media just, you know, and I don't really have the energy to go looking through on the media. We can't even find anything about what happened with J.C. Pinnell in New Jersey. So talking about what they're dealing with in Texas post-barrel, uh, let's go to Texas right now. And you see they're already a heat advisory in effect in some of these areas. Uh, and if we go northeast of Houston, some of these areas here. Houston, 89, dew point 71. Uh, at Houston Intercontinental Airport hit 95 there today. They're dealing with very high dew points, very high temperatures, and a lot of people that don't have air conditioning there. So um, a lot of people, you know, this could be a deadly situation that the... the the death toll from Barrow could climb because of the power outages. People may die from this heat. So uh, it's not over yet. Uh, even though the storm may have left Texas, a lot of people are still suffering from the power outages. Um, and uh, the restoration is going very slowly, way too slowly. The fact that these transmission lines still have not been repaired a day, they should have been repaired today. I think it's unacceptable. Uh, Texas power grid is a freaking joke. Fortunately, Florida has a very good power grid, but Texas is Texas has a worse power grid than we do. All right, so I really feel bad for those people. Um, also, going across, we have tornado watch now. So the east side of Barrow was still seeing a tornado watch in um, uh, parts of Indiana and, and uh, Missouri, I think. Um, on the right side, and you see all these flood watches here that go all the way up into the Great Lakes into Michigan uh, from Barrow. And you can see, uh, if we look at precipitation here, let's see, let's see how much rain has fallen in the past 24 hours in this area. And you see a lot of rain has fallen here. A lot of rain, two, three inches of rain here. This is the center track, and to the right of it is where you see the tornado threat. Arkansas also, look at some of these numbers, 4.73 they've seen a lot of heavy rain uh so let's go look at the radar and see what's going on in this area right now um and you see yeah look at this you can still clearly see the signature of barrel now be taking more of an uh, extra tropical look to it um but we still have a lot of heavy rain in indiana uh and then this feeder band here uh where to the to the to the right of this is where you could see some possible tornadoes um, and you got all this heavy rain here going on into, uh, looks like a lot of parts of Indiana. And this all is going to move up into Michigan. Uh, you can see that. That's, that's quite a, uh, you can see this thin little line here of thunderstorms here. Um, now, let's go to the Storm Prediction Center here. And you'll see here on the overview, we've got that risk uh, in that red area marked out in red. That's where we have the tornado risk. Uh, and if we look at storm reports, we'll see... Sure enough, we have a couple of tornadoes that touched down today. Three tornadoes sighted in that area. Luckily, it's died down a little bit from yesterday, but um, quite, still quite uh, a significant amount of uh, rainfall and uh, severe weather. And if we go into tomorrow's convective outlook, uh, you'll see that slight risk actually gets closer to us. Remember, uh, right side of the storm, uh, the marginal risk uh, for severe weather is... Uh, to the north and the west of us, in northern New Jersey, Hudson Valley, parts of Connecticut, and then most of New York, including western New York, Albany, the capital region, um, is going to see the slight risk for severe weather for tomorrow. And if we go to tornado risk, there actually is a 5% tornado risk that they have for, it looks like, western New York stretching through the capital region into New Hampshire and Vermont. So... This is an area we may see some tornadoes in parts of New York State tomorrow um, with this because, again, right side of the storm, that's what we see. Um, let's go to the satellite image. We'll take a look at uh, the CONUS view here. So we'll get a look at barrels remnants as they go up north. 
And you'll see there's there's the remnants of Beryl right there, making their way northeast, we're right up into the Great Lakes. And you can see we're on the that's gonna this area that's in Indiana is gonna affect parts of New York tomorrow, uh, and that's where they have the threat for some severe weather. You'll notice again out west, uh, wildfire smoke, a lot of wildfire smoke. You can see here. Move to that, and look at that. That's the other thing that we're dealing with is all this heat. Now, let's go and look at the U.S. Pacific Coast. I guess we'll go and look at that. As you can see, we've got wildfires here in, in Northern California. Looks like we got one in Washington, and that one in Utah is still going strong. Um, that wildfire there in Utah, which is uh, really, uh, really bad. Um, so, you know, no surprise with the heat and the drought. And not, not really anything is going to change out there. Uh, we'll go look at high temperatures on here, and we'll show you the heat that's going on out west obviously they've had all-time records smashed um as you've seen me post about that look at this we've got 118 uh, these are some really high temperatures folks <laughs> a lot of extreme heat interior california just you can see the excessive heat warnings uh madera got up it's still 101 there uh the humidity is 25 percent with a dew point of 59 so some of these Humidity is a very, very, very low, um, which is not good for the fire situation. So take a look at this. Edwards Air Force Base. It's 109 degrees right now. The dew point is 4 degrees. Relative humidity is 2%, and haze is being reported. So these, these are the kind of conditions where, you know, we could have wildfires. Southwest wind at 20 miles an hour as well. Extremely hot, extreme, extremely dry conditions in these areas here. Uh, in the southwest into California, all the way up, uh, in, you know, and you have to be right at the coast to have any kind of relief. I mean, even San Fran, uh, let's see what San Francisco got up to. All right, there's 70 in San Francisco. San Francisco got lucky. They always get a nice little breeze off the bay. Uh, but if we look at Los Angeles here, let's look at L.A. here. Of course, I've got to find it. You know, we got this shading that is way too much. It's hard for me to even see the cities here. Let's see, L.A. got up to 88. Okay, it's not terrible. Uh, but if you go inland, 100 degrees. Um, and then in these areas inland, you're just dying here. You're just dying in this. Oh, it's a dry heat, but it's hot, right? I mean, it's these are some really hot temperatures out west. And uh, this goes all the way up the Cascade Range, all the way up into Oregon. Got where we got more excessive heat warnings and red flag warnings in effect. Redmond. 106 was a high. It got up to 102. Right now, 102, 12% humidity. So, yeah, this is really, really very, very uh, hot conditions. 106 uh, for a high at Grant County. 14% uh, humidity. Uh, you know, the heat just continues. Look, It continues even up into uh, Canada now. Kamloops got up to 104 it's it's 104 right now at Kamloops in Canada, 104 degrees. That these these are probably more all-time records being shattered here. I don't ever remember seeing it that hot in Kamloops. It's going way up into Canada. Even Quenzel, 99. I mean, look at how hot, uh, far into Canada these 90s go. Look at this, Alberta, northern Alberta. We got highs in the upper 90s to around 100 degrees. A high of 99 at Gardner River. This is unheard of. And the humidity is only 18%. We're going to see a lot more wildfires because of this. I mean, this is insane kind of heat to get this far north. This is absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, that's, I've never seen it like that. Never. And that just alludes, again, to the all-time records that we were talking about. Um... Uh, if I go here, we go to um, back to my 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 posts here. So now I gotta go and go here because I'm not gonna go look through my thing here. Just look through my posts. Uh, you'll see that uh, I have a post here. More all-time records broken out west, and you can see Las Vegas 120, Palm Springs 124, Redding 119, Redding California 119 degrees. My gosh, that's that's just unbelievable. So it's just this is unheard of kind of stuff. 
Um, and again, looking at these wildfires, we'll just take another look at them here. I'm actually going to want to look at Southeast Alaska Satellite because this shows part of, oh yeah, no surprise. Got a huge, huge wildfires going right now in um, in the northern, uh, northern, northeastern Alberta, uh, northeastern uh, British Columbia and northwestern. So yeah, no surprise. Look at that. Uh, that's going to be a lot of smoke. So here we go again. Um, thought we weren't going to deal with the haze from the wildfires. Well, you better think again. It's just starting to get ramped up right now. Um, we'll do a Canada northern U.S. view. Get, get another look at the smoke from these wildfires. Yeah, look at all that smoke. Yeah, that's going to drift into the... Con yeah. So, yeah, look at all that smoke right there. That's a lot of smoke. That's a lot of wildfire smoke. That's all drifting down into the northern tier. So this is where your trough is. That's getting pulled down. That's, yeah, that's a tremendous amount of smoke right there. That's, that's unbelievable. Look, look at this picture. I mean, that just shows you the whole west is on fire up into Canada. And there's Beryl. So, and no relief. It's going to stay dry there. And hot and dry. No relief. Uh, if we look at the GFS, or actually we can go to the Weather Prediction Center here. WPC. And do the rainfall. Now, as you see, you got your excessive rain in, in, in this area where Beryl's remnants are. Uh, but if we go to our QPF and do our day 3 to 7 QPF. No, no, QPF. Day 1 through 7. Uh, yeah, it's dry. This doesn't show Canada, but it's dry all the way up there. It's not a good situation at all. It's not a good situation at all. Um... So, uh, and you'll see, if I go to the uh, GFS here, just go to this for a minute, and I'll just go total accumulated precip. This is where the wildfires are burning way up there. Or it looks like it's bringing some kind of precipitation, perhaps. Um, perhaps they'll see some in extreme northern. But we'll see if that actually materializes. It could be, it could be a thought. It's so hot and dry there. Even a little bit of rain may not even put these fires out, so... That's, yeah, there's a lot going on. So anyway, let's go look at the surface map here and show you what we have for the rest of this week. Into the weekend, you see there's Beryl going mostly into the Great Lakes. See that ridge? Not going anywhere. So we're going to be on the periphery of that, dealing with that. We may start to see some moisture funnel up that ridge Friday um, and bring us some more rain chances perhaps Friday night into Saturday and then more chances for rain perhaps on the Sunday onto the weekend right now. Um, let's look at the more, and the heat continues out west. There's not going to be a ch any change there. Let's go look at the HRRR, zero is the HRRR, which you should have mostly in now. You see the remnants of Beryl there going up Michigan, western New York, uh, more or less, um, of weeding, um, most of our area, but you'll see there are some pretty severe thunderstorms that will break out in western New York, and then a line develops. And the models are indicating that there's going to be a line in Pennsylvania tomorrow night, and unfortunately, by the time it gets here, it's probably going to fizzle out. Uh, one thing you'll also notice is the very strong su southerly flow we're going to have. So that's going to help improve air quality, at least along the coast, make it feel better. But if you're inland, you're still going to roast. So let's look at the dew points and wind flow here. And you'll see dew points stay very high tomorrow. No real relief. Suddenly flow, though. That'll help at least make things more bearable on Long Island and at the coast. But in Jersey, you're going to roast. Uh, and then here come the remnants of barrel. Now, something very interesting happens. It tries to bring in a little bit of drier air on Thursday, mainly west of the city. The dew points might actually drop into the 60s. Um, we are probably not going to see that. You can see there's almost like a little boundary here that kind of sets up uh, on into Thursday. Uh, that might actually, you might see some drier air temporarily because the humidity will come right back um, past that. You can see that. Uh, Friday, um, we'll look at Friday in a moment, but temperatures not going to really drop all that much tonight. And then tomorrow, Jersey, you're going to roast in the 90s again. Very high humidity. It's going to feel like over 100 and much in New Jersey. Uh, but Long Island, we should be similar today with the temperatures. Uh, and then here we are for Thursday. Uh, going into Thursday, and you'll see uh, again. Um, you'll see it actually winds up being a little hotter on Long Island, perhaps maybe because there's a little more of a westerly flow. So it could be 85 to 90. Jersey will be a little cooler. Uh, 
with uh, temperatures around 90 degrees. All right. Um, the other wild card, of course, is the fog. And uh, we're seeing that. That's why we got the dense fog advisor again offshore. Um, cloud cover, we can look at this and you see again, there's, you know, you see a lot of saturated air. Again, the skies today, we'll show you what the skies look like today. Uh, we did have some break. We had actually more sunshine than expected. It was a little bit of blue sky, but more or less plenty of clouds around uh, throughout the day. Uh, and I did see the fog clouds off to the south, but I wasn't at the beach. But there probably was fog there as well. Um, so let's take a look at some more models here. We'll go to the NAM 3. Obviously, I don't have the 0Z in. But I do want to see how the NAM handles the remnants of Beryl. Uh, so let's go to that. Um, and again, you'll see most of that stays to the west. There's that line again. But unfortunately, that line kind of just falls apart when it gets here. We'll have to see. You see, it, it's got that. And wherever this line develops, it could actually have some severe thunderstorms within that line. Um, but most of the action is going to be upstate. And you can see that line kind of moves off to the east. It gets hung up over the east end of Long Island. So you can see there's like a stalled frontal boundary right here. A little frontal boundary right here uh, that may get stuck just to the east of Long Island under the west, better conditions. Um, uh, look at skies here. It kind of yeah, kind of shows that as well, that maybe less clouds off to the west on Thursday, perhaps. Um, and then tomorrow, uh, this is the NAM again showing, again, that stratus layer over Long Island. Um, let's go to the R gym and look at the skies on that. So R gym, obviously showing, again, a good deal of clouds tomorrow, but there may be some sun. There may be sun again. The sun seems to be, seems like there's always more sun than, than what the models call for Thursday. Uh, a lot of clouds, again, over our area. It looks like, again, because that stole frontal boundary. Um... Again, we'll keep the clouds around, uh, but we'll have to see. Again, the models have been overdoing the clouds for a while, so I'm not sure if, you know, like today there was way more sun than, than they said. Oh, it was going to be mostly cloudy. It was really no worse than partly sunny most of the day. There were clouds, but the sun was out, and, you know, depending on where you were, of course, I guess out in Suffolk they had more of the stratus, but here in Nassau, we definitely seen, seen a decent amount of sun. So depending on where you are, of course, along the coast, you'll see more more clouds, which would tend to keep the temperatures down because we have these high dew points, but uh, if we go and we look at the uh, sea surface temperatures, let's do that right now. Some of the buoys. Let's get some of these buoy observations here. Uh, the water temperature is 74, so if the dew point is 75 and the water temperature is 74, yeah, it's a very high dew point, and the water temperature is pretty warm, but still it's enough to have fog, and that's what we're seeing. Um... Let's see this buoy here. Water temperature also 73. However, uh, the Jersey Shore is actually been getting some upwelling. Let's see. Water temperature. No, that's a 73. But I've heard about that there have been some upwelling on the Jersey Shore. Linked to some cooler water temperatures. But I'm not seeing it here on, on the in the data that we have available. Um, so, yeah, the humidity continues. The uh, Get any kind of relief. Here's the GFS with clouds, by the way. You can see the same thing. The front just kind of hot. hot gets hung up over us. And you can see here Friday still dealing with this remnants of this front. Uh, and then maybe we can get pushed them off to the east a little bit on Saturday. But it's not going to really bring any... Uh, I don't think it's going to bring any relief to the humidity at all. Uh, dew points, again, um, you'll see here. There's that drier air. So barrel tries to pull... The, the remnants of barrel tries to pull down some drier air, but it just hits the ridge and it can't make it through. And you can see maybe a, some slight relief to the humidity on Saturday. Uh, but with more of a westerly wind, that means it's going to be hotter. Uh, and then Sunday, uh, we go back to the southwest. A little disturbed about that more westerly flow because, you know, when that happens, that means it's going to be hotter here. Uh, so uh, here, let's look at Saturday. Not really showing it, but it could be underestimating it. And then just ahead, looking ahead at next week, the heat comes back in a big way. Um, you see there, look at that. Tuesday, Wednesday, we're going to be roasting all week long, folks. So, uh, Leslie will do a look at the smoke. Um, which I do want to look at the rainfall, total accumulate precip, see what you can see. Most of that is to the north and the west. It is, it is when we get into Friday that we might see, uh, some more chances for showers and thunderstorms with that stalled boundary or whatever the heck sets up over us. Very unusual to see that. Um, because there's really not much of a boundary there. It's like almost like a little feeder band or something, maybe related to barrel. 
Uh, it's trying to form one. But um, let's lastly go look at the smoke. Uh, I'll go to the RAP smoke models here. Uh, just see where that smoke from all those wildfires is going. Um, let's see, i got to figure out which one is the one that goes far. It's not the zero Z run. The three Z. All right, we'll look at this one. These are old runs. Jeez. Yeah, these are old runs, but we'll use them anyway. Uh, let's see what we got here. Let's see where all because there's a lot of smoke up there, and I'm kind of curious to see where it's going. See it right there. So we'll have to see if that winds up impacting our area, but that ridge is probably going to tend to keep the smoke away uh, from us. Uh, it's going to be more of an issue for the west. Uh, we'll have to see. That's a lot of smoke right there. And I'm kind of curious if it's impacting the air quality right now. And then I'll wrap up this weather update. But I just want to see what we have in some of these other areas uh, up, th up there. If we're reporting smoke or not. Nine mile visibility at Dryden. Let's see Winnipeg. They're not reporting smoke right there. Well, that's not, that's not an official station. Let's get an airport. Come on. It's not an official station either. I just want an airport. Because if it's not a if it's not if it's not an airport, it's not gonna show. Yeah, here we go. Winnipeg. Uh that's hey, have an airport in Winnipeg, really? <laughs> that's odd. Kind of cure alright. Well, no airport here. Okay. See the dew point is not that low either. Sixty two. Showing the dew points in here. We'll take the dew points away. Um, let's see if we can get some more observations here. Red Lake. Now they're reporting 15 mile visibility. So it must, smoke must be at the higher levels for now, but it's going to work its way down eventually. We can go into Saskatchewan and maybe I'm picking the wrong area. Ah, here we go. LaRange, Saskatchewan is reporting smoke and three mile visibility. So, yeah, the smoke's definitely around. You're definitely seeing it. Uh, and it's going to make its way further to the south as well. So, yeah, the smoke is going to start becoming an issue for sure. Um, and I think that's just about it. Uh, we've gone kind of gone through everything here at this point. So, um, yeah. So it feels like I am forgetting something, but whatever. Um, anyway, uh, there you go. There's a look at all that smoke again that you see up in Canada. So uh, wildfire smoke all over the west, barrel to the east, and uh, over here, us, it stays humid. Well, anyway, um, have a good night.